we're here at Misty Brook again, and I managed to catch Chimer again. Um, we're here to do a basic, basic health exam. So, when you look over your animal, you want to notice things like how bright their eyes are, how shiny their hair coat is, whether or not their hair is standing up, except in the case of sheep, because you can't tell. Um, one thing with cows that is helpful to notice is a healthy cow will lick their nose. So you want to make sure that their nose is licking it. Another good thing to notice when you're up at their heads is to take note of the smell of their breath. Uh, any kind of off smell usually is an indication that there's something wrong. They could either have a tooth abscess or ketosis. Um, and it's a little hard to tell on jerseys because they have brown eyes anyway, but we check the whites of their eyes for, for yellowness. And you can check inside an animal's eyelid for how pink it is. If you're at all familiar with Formatia scoring in sheep, that's how red their eyelid is, indicates if they have an overabundance of fiber pole worms. So while we're at his head, we're checking his ears to make sure his ears are warm. Uh, nose wet, eyes bright, warm ears. Shamir looks pretty good. You can pinch their skin. If their skin, if you pinch their skin and it doesn't snap back, if it stays tented up, then uh, they're dehydrated. And we had talked a little bit about their breath smelling a little off. Um, if they do have a problem with ketosis, it's a, it's a liver issue. And on the other side of the cow, you can push in right at the back of their scapula, their shoulder blade. And as they move away, they'll clench these abdominal muscles and it will pinch in on that liver area and they'll jump. So they get really jumpy when you, when you push on them up here because they're contracting their muscles on the liver. Now remember, that's not on this side, that's on the other side. Another good one is as you run your hand along their top line, you give them a good squeeze, and if you see Shimer kind of arched his back away from my hands, and if they don't do that, cows are what we call indiscriminate eaters. They sweep with their tongue because they don't have any top teeth in the front. And sometimes they end up eating pieces of metal, and that first stomach lays right against their heart The reticulum, that first stomach, it lays right against their heart. And if they happen to eat a piece of metal, it can poke through into their heart and they won't want to get away from you. They won't want to arch their back away from your fingers when you squeeze. They'll stay kind of hunched up. They won't want to lay down. And they'll look like they're in pain. They'll get that dull eye kind of distracted look. So the other thing to keep an eye out for, as far as just uh, visuals, is Shimer's really fat because he's a market ready steer. Um, but this, what we call the chine area, they have short ribs. And the rule of thumb is you want to pinch an inch. And that's a bit more than an inch on Shimer. The other thing you want to look for on the left side of the cow is that this triangle is filled in. That means their rumen is full and that they've been eating. And while you're doing a quick eye exam or visual exam, you can check out their stomach and their legs, carry a flashlight. I'm not entirely sure how this one turned. Oh, it twists. Um, and with a cow that you know, you can kind of look up under, utter. You can use your flashlight to check her eyes, inside her mouth. Uh, it's always good to have in your first aid kit. 
Um, you're looking for any abrasions, any kind of sticks stuck where they shouldn't be. Just really, really outwardly physical things. And once you've done your basic visual exam, I always start with that and then move to the stethoscope. Put your stethoscope in your ears. Um, mine is fancy enough to have two sides. Green means go. So that's the side I use. And you can hear, of course I don't have it in my ears, so, but I don't need it. <laughs> Not at the moment. Um, down by their elbow is where their heart's located. And you can listen for your beats per minute. Time it for 15 seconds, multiply by four. Up in kind of this triangle, you've got their lungs. And you can listen for any kind of scratching or heavy breathing. And that will indicate that maybe they have pneumonia. Another good thing to look for when they have pneumonia is that these abdominal muscles will be tucking in every time they breathe. Uh, for those of you with children, apparently babies do the same thing. I asked my doctor. <laughs> and another thing that we do is when we're checking the health of their stomach, if they don't happen to be eating, we check for odd pockets of air in their stomach. So we'll give their sides a really good flick. And we don't want to hear really anything but a dull thud. If you hear what sounds like a basketball bouncing on the concrete, a ping, 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 then your cow's in trouble. It's also on this left side where we listen to her rumen. This, the rumen comes back and fills up this space here. And on a cow, we'll stir twice per minute. And what you're listening for in a healthy rumen is for it to swish up and kind of push your hand out and then gurgle away. And swish up and push your hand out and gurgle away. And if the camera's good enough, you can almost see it happen. See it's gone away. And this happens on any ruminant. Cows, sheep, goats. It's gone down, and you can see it kind of hollow out. And it's coming back, and you can see it kind of push my hand up. And go back down again. So that's a really healthy rumen. Shimer eats a lot. So if you can't feel their rumen and you can't hear it, if you happen to have a stethoscope, which I recommend that you do, and you're getting that basketball sound, that ping, 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 it means that they've twisted their stomach. Their fourth stomach isn't attached by a lot. And if they're not eating, it will empty out of food and it will fill up with air. And it has the potential to twist on itself, which is almost certainly a death sentence if you don't uh, if you don't take care of it immediately or it will twist and come over to this left side that one is the most common and it gives you a little bit of time and in my other video with Shimer I talked about being able to lay him down and roll him up onto his back and slowly roll him to the other side to untwist that stomach to get it back where it belongs so it all sounds good here. Shimer's healthy. We're going to go back and take his temperature. And for taking temperatures, <laughs> there's, on a, on a cow you'll have their vulva where he doesn't and their anus, and we're going to go for his bum. So you turn your thermometer on, 
I spit on it. Some people have lube. And then I just go for the center of his anus and gently push in. And we just hold it there until it beeps if it's a digital thermometer. If you happen to have a mercury thermometer, you shake it down and you put it in for about two minutes and then you take it out and you can read it. The easiest way is to get a digital thermometer. If they happen to poop while you're taking the temperature, which they, they often do, just kind of pick your thermometer up so that the poop can fall down around it. Um, and I don't need to stand here until he's done. So while I'm back here, if he ever happens to have a problem or you're assisting your vet, a good way to keep a cow from kicking is to just lift their tail straight up because it puts, it puts downward pressure on his hips and keeps him from being able to pick up his back legs. And some will ask you to do that and some will just be really impressed that you know how already. Another good restraining method is to grab them by their flank if you can push them into a wall. And on this side, we're listening for some of the same things. We're listening for gurgles in the stomach. This is that side that I told you you could push up under their scapula and they'll pinch down on their liver if they're having liver problems. Um, there, if you get any kind of pinging on this side and a cow is not eating, you call your vet immediately. It's a major issue and it requires surgery. So you shouldn't get any pinging on this side. You should just hear some mild gurgles, some healthy gut sounds. Uh, you can listen for their lungs again in this kind of triangle and their heart down by their... So on a cow, her vulva would sit right here and you want to rub in this area, just under her vulva, kind of touching up to the bottom of her vulva to get her to pee. And you just rub. And sometimes it takes a little while. There you go. He's peeing. He's peeing. <laughs> so when she pees out of her vulva, you can get what they call keto sticks at your local feed store. And apparently it works on the male anatomy as well, because Shimer is peeing. <laughs> uh, but you can get keto sticks at your local feed store. Uh, and what you do is when they start to pee, you hold that. It's essentially uh, really similar to a pH stick. You hold it in their uh, stream of urine. And normally cows get ketosis when they've just calved. Within three months of just calving, they can develop ketosis. I've seen really, really, really fat cows develop it just because. <laughs> um, but it normally happens in really fat cows. Uh, and it happens because their energy and protein levels get really out of whack. Um, they're pregnant. They, and they're fat and they can't fill up their stomach so they can't possibly take in the amount of energy that it's needed when they, after they calve and they start to lactate. So they end up breaking down their, their, their muscle. Um, if you've ever heard of the ketone diet, that's essentially what's going on is they're, they're breaking down the proteins that are in their body and it's getting excreted in their urine. Um, If your cow is for some reason losing weight, <coughs> excuse me, and you can't figure it out, you don't think they're, they're wormy, I would be very suspicious of ketosis. Um, one of the other indicators that they have ketosis is that their breath will smell really, really strange. And if you get a cow with very, very high ketosis, really extreme ketosis, they will run around and lick everything in your barn. And it's what we call crazy ketosis. Uh, and if your cow is ever doing that, 
please call your vet. You need some major intervention because she is either ketotic or she's rabid. <laughs> um, yeah, that's our health exam. The liver on this side? I talked about it already. I did it again. <laughs> so, Shimer's probably glad this time we didn't drop him on the ground. And um, that's it. Give him a good pet and let him go. If you've got a really friendly cow or animal, you can check their feet. And I'm not sure how cooperative Shimer will be, but you can check in between their claws for anything foreign. It's a good opportunity to trim them. If you want to trim them yourself, you can put them in between your knees and trim them. You can tie them up with a rope and trim them. You can also hire somebody to do it. It's a lot quicker. Um, but if you noticed how I did that, I just ran my hand down their leg and gave the whole thing a little squeeze with my hand and I pushed into him at the same time and it, he could pick up his foot for me. I'm not going to try his back feet. Suspicious he'd send me flying. Um, that's a really good thing to do with your animals when they're little. Having their ears, their eyes, their nose in between their legs touched and having their feet picked up. It just makes your life a lot easier when they get older. So that's my parting words of advice. If you have just a few animals, handle them, but handle them in a responsible way. If it's cute when they're little, it's not so cute when they get to be about 200 pounds. So.